burned is physical trauma, and we often experience first on our skin. First degree burns are what almost everybody has experienced. This is the sunburn, classically. This is when you've just been out too early in the season, a little too long, and you get a sunburn. The sunburn is, it has all the symptoms of inflammation, but just at a very low level. You have redness, swelling, uh, pain, and heat, all in the area of the burn. It's completely self-limiting. Nothing has to be done. It will resolve usually in a matter of days, and there's never any scarring. That's first degree burn. Second degree burn is a big step up. In a second degree burn, the transudate, or the fluid, or exudate, as it gets worse, separates the top layer of the skin, which is the epithelial cells, from the lower layer of the skin, which has the replacement cells, the basal layer. This is where our stem cells are that replace the upper layer. And what happens in the middle is you get that big blister that you uh, probably have all seen maybe after rowing, seeing blisters in your hands, some area of your body that you're not used to using, but also in a second degree burn by definition. This is the way we define it. The blistering uh, usually will come from scalding water, from brief contact with a very hot surface. And the important part about this again is it's self-limiting. It will heal itself, nothing has to be done. And in fact, we try to leave the skin intact so that um, the fluid can be reabsorbed. And if infection doesn't intervene, the burn will go away, the skin will be restored, and no scarring. There will be, uh, oddly enough, more pain in this one, if not only for pressure, but uh, again, the cytokines. Uh, the third degree burn is where we now take this to a whole new level and we actually burn the replacement layers of the skin. It's gone deep enough down now so that the basal layer and the stem cells are destroyed and the skin can't replace itself. If, a, if it's a bigger area than about that, the the skin from the edges cannot grow over. In a small third degree burn, uh, you might get growth to cover it from the surrounding edges, but if it's a big area of the body, the kind we see in burn units, after major flame burns or scalding water immersion, um, it's not gonna be able to replace itself, and now we've lost that physical barrier that we talked about in the beginning, our waterproof skin. So when you hear about somebody who's got 70 and 80% burns of their body, they've lost 70 or 80% um, of their skin, and now they're gonna dehydrate, and the physicians in charge of these patients have a huge problem. They've got to get this patient covered again and prevent supervening infection, Otherwise, the patient, one, will die of infection, sepsis, or they will die of dehydration. And one of the ways we cover this is either with skin grafts from the person themselves, take split thickness skin, just the top layer of skin, remove it from one area so it's almost like a second degree burn. They still have the basal layer, and we lay it on the area that's got the third degree burn, cover that as a dressing, and then as a new source of some cells to grow over. Uh, this is very, very serious in terms of threat to life. Burn units are very specialized. And oddly enough, and somewhat paradoxically, this is not usually as painful as a second degree burn because the patient has lost their nerve endings. And so that area of the body will be numb, although nobody, or very rarely is anybody, completely third degree. They have combinations of first, second, and third degree, so they're really miserable. They're in pain, they can't move, uh, and this is a group of patients very difficult to take care of. And just for completeness, there is something we call a fourth degree burn, and that's when it goes all the way through the skin and into the deeper tissues. And of course, here, we're very worried about replacement and coverage, and these patients are usually suffering from a much greater threat to their well-being and their recovery.